tonight for the N21 Festival meeting. Um, anybody who's just having a drink in the bar, sorry about all this, but uh, that's what we're here for. And if you want to join in, please do. Um, it's 8 o'clock, uh, just after. And I just wanted to um, let everybody know that we're going to have a number of charities speaking this evening and decide on the charities for the N21 Festival. Um, but before we do that, some meetings start with a prayer. But um, obviously, this is the N21 Festival, so we're going to start our meeting with a reading from Henrietta Creswell's book. Over to you, Joe. Can you all hear me? Way. Right, those of you who are not aware of the book ought to, be, ought to know that when Henrietta was writing this book, she referred to everyone in sort of third person, including herself. She referred to herself as Little Winifred, which was a nickname that her grandmother gave her. So just bear that in mind from this read. Winifred and the doctor went down to Highfield Row for him to visit a sick child in the rookery at the back of the orange tree. Hey! <laughs> And did they catch crabs in the farm? It was a house where the stair was steep and the ceiling was so low that the doctor invariably broke the top of his chimney pot's hat. And when he went there, he kept a little wooden trumpet in that hat, which was rather a mystery. It was firmly wedged across the crown. Also, he came home with it full of flowers, cottage roses or clove pinks, or even a few mushrooms picked in a field as he went along. It was no wonder to the children that a person as clever as a conjurer should be able to produce live rabbits, packets of sweets, or miles of tissue paper ribbon out of a hat, as even the doctors served him as a lightweight pocket of sundries. Now why are so many inns called the Orange Tree? Was it out of compliment to Dutch Billy? I wonder. The hostelry in Highfield Row was rather picturesque, with a round bow window of small panes, and with benches in the porch. The swinging sideboard, oh, that sideboard, the swinging sideboard, no, it's signboard, opposite stood on the edge of a running brook full of cress and forget-me-nots and a golden border of, of flea bane on the bank. The rushes were long and green and it was possible to get the fine lengths of their velvet white pith. There were a dozen half-grown ducklings splashing about in the water and Winifred was too young to connect them mentally with the rows of green peas and the well-filled pods in the garden next to the orange tree. There was another orange tree at Coney Hatch, which place she believed was, was peopled entirely by lunatics. Thank you, Joe. Thanks very much. That was the orange tree from Henrietta Creswell's book and the visit that the doctor made down here. Amazing um, story there. Um, the orange tree, as it was in the book, wasn't, uh, didn't carry on very much longer after that. And in 1912, a new orange tree was built. And this was, this is it, built in 1912. It's 100 years old this year. Um, and it shares, obviously, the centenary with the book. And we'd just like to say a very big thank you to Marie and John for allowing the festival to be here tonight. And we'd also like to congratulate you as well for 20 years in this pub this month. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Marie and John. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Another 20 years. Fantastic. Thank you so much. History in the making. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Marie. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, let's get down to business. And I'd like to pass you over to Nikki, who's going to tell you all about how we're going to do the charities tonight. Thank you. 